Welcome to CTV News on this Wednesday night. I'm Dylan Thomas. And I'm Lena Howland. Going on a Sunday bike ride is supposed to be a leisurely activity, but for two Boulder cyclists, that wasn't the case. An SUV honked at the riders for five minutes without passing them. It happened near Longmont along County Line Road north of Highway 52. State Patrol knows who the driver is, and they are trying to get in contact with him. With Fort Collins having such a big bike culture, there is a good chance that something like this could happen in Fort Collins. CTV decided to talk to students to see what they would do if they were in a similar situation. I would probably start riding faster and trying to get away from whoever was honking at me, and if that didn't work, I really don't know what I would do. That just sounds like a really interesting situation. Um, I would think he's kind of creepy. like. If it was following me for a long period of time, I'd be kind of freaked out and call the police. And if it was like for a few minutes, I'd just get off the road and let him pass me. So I would probably just pull over and let the car pass me. Um, I wouldn't necessarily get too aggressive about it. I'd probably get a little bit upset or annoyed, but I don't, I don't think it's caused to uh, start any sort of confrontation, especially with someone who has that much rage. Have you noticed any new apparel on downtown police officers? Well, two officers are testing out a special pair of Oakley glasses with brand new technology. Let's take a look. Pepper spray, a gun, and a badge. Three essentials to a police officer's uniform. But some are getting a new essential. It's just something that I put on every day now when I come to work. Fort Collins District 1 police officers are starting to use glasses just like these to record officer interactions with this camera. It captures what we're, what we're, what we're really doing and it gives people um, a, a sense of pause, I think, sometimes, both the officers and the, uh, the citizenry, that uh, their interaction is being recorded. And it, it's, a, you know, it's a piece of the puzzle. It doesn't capture everything. You know, my angle of my camera might be different than if someone was standing over here, but it's a piece of the puzzle. A piece that is only being tested by two officers in Old Town Fort Collins. So far, we've really liked the results of them, so I think we're pushing towards uh, equipping all of the officers that are in the District 1 substation downtown so that we cover all of the, uh, basically the bar area downtown. The cameras will save the video 30 seconds prior to pressing the record button, which is mounted on their belts. Then the camera turns on the audio and it captures the entire time. Although camera phones have been known to record officer interactions such as this riot in 2010, these cameras shoot from the officer's point of view. It's pretty powerful evidence. And just a warning, if you're looking into investing in one of these Taser Axon Flex cameras, it'll cost you. The bundle for just one of these cameras costs upwards of $900. Forensic tests were released Wednesday in connection to the murder case of Trayvon Martin. The test showed that George Zimmerman's DNA was the only DNA that could be identified on the grip of the gun used to shoot the 17-year-old. Tests were also done on the gun's holster, but were found inconclusive. Martin was shot to death in Florida by Zimmerman last February. And after several reported incidents of groping in the Denver metro area, Denver police have made an arrest. 26-year-old Juan Hernandez Vargas was arrested on Tuesday following several weeks of an undercover surveillance operation. Investigators say the suspect waited near alleys for women to walk by before approaching them and assaulting his victims. Hernandez Vargas has two previous arrests on his criminal record, including a 2005 arrest for obstructing police and a 2009 arrest for a misdemeanor assault and disturbing the peace. Coming up on CTV, what newspaper on campus will now be available to students online with no extra charge? And how this year's drought is affecting recreation at Horsetooth Reservoir. We'll be right back. Two outs with a runner on first base. Now the big guy comes up with that, hitting 342 with 92 RBIs and 36 homes. This is the Chill raw and prepared foods promptly. One in six Americans will get sick from food poisoning this year. Keep your family safer. Check your steps at foodsafety.gov. If you're looking for a new pet that you can cherish every day, consider adopting from a shelter. Shelters are full of healthy, loyal, fun, loving pets, eager to become a part of your family. 
A person is the best thing to happen to a shelter pet. So bring home your new buddy today. To find out more, you can visit the shelterpetproject.org. A new pass system is designed to give students more access to the New York Times. The pass is provided at no extra cost and allows CSU students to access the online version of the New York Times for 24 hours. There will be 340 passes provided to students every day. The New York Times is the first of the collegiate readership newspapers to include an online version as well as a print version. The goal for the new pass is to give students more access to the news of the world. And as plans for an updated mall continue, only a small amount of the existing retailers at the Foothills Mall will be offered leases in the new shopping center. Developers anticipate a more upscale model than what currently exists. Among those displaced will more than likely be the Arc Thrift Store, Ross, and Sears. The mall development would be part of the urban renewal of the city. This last weekend, reporter Kelsey Peterson went down to Horsetooth Reservoir to get the scoop on how the current drought is impacting the water levels and, in turn, recreation. I'm here at Horsetooth Reservoir today, and as you can see behind me, the few number of boats that are trying to get into the waters. As recreation was previously closed, some inlets are now back open, but for how long is uncertain. The water levels are not what they used to be. Between starting the year with little snow and the current drought conditions, Horsetooth water levels have dropped to a level that hasn't been seen since about a decade ago. If you look over the past 10 years, this isn't the first drought that we've had. They said that the drought in 2002 was to be the 100 year drought and yet just 10 years later we have a drought that is even more significant. According to the Northern Water Conservancy District, Horsetooth Reservoir will be closed to recreation when it hits 5,325 feet. Right now, it's about 35 feet above that level, meaning recreation is extremely close to being closed for the second time this summer. This was the end of August, and uh, my friends, who one of them owns a boat up here, and they were going to go fishing and spend the afternoon one Saturday on the lake, and upon arrival at Horsetooth, they were denied access because the water levels were too dangerously low. With the water elevation having dropped significantly just over the past month, business at Horsetooth is not far behind. Last year, the water level was almost full still last year, and now it's down probably 200 feet at least. So it's definitely affected recreation as well as use of the lake in general. Yeah, I remember last year being here a couple of times. And I mean, at this time of the night, this parking lot was basically still halfway full. and now you can't see a boat trailer in sight. I'm concerned for the future. How are we going to be able to have water? Are we going to be able to provide water for everyone? What's going to happen? Are we going to have food shortages? Are we going to have um, climate change? These are things we should all be thinking about, but for now, I'm sure we can all find something to do at Horsetooth. Kelsey Peterson, CTV News. Between now and when Horsetooth was closed in August, they have made makeshift docks. Due to these docks, recreational boating has since continued in certain areas of Horsetooth. And still ahead, what this week's weather looks like, Kari Pills will join us with the seven-day forecast. And why one local corn maze is on everybody's mind this upcoming football season. Stay tuned. Thanks. Can you believe this guy? Are you trying to start a wildfire? Sorry. Pass the honey. Nine out of ten wildfires are caused by humans. Only you can prevent wildfires. <laughs> Traditional light bulbs actually generate nine times more heat than light. Switch to Energy Star light bulbs, and you'll realize just how much cash you are really burning through. Saving energy saves you money. Learn more at energysavers.gov.
Welcome back to CTV. It was a beautiful day today. We saw highs in the low 80s across the state, and it's starting to feel a lot like fall outside. The air is getting a little bit crisper and cooler, especially at night. We're seeing lows in the 40s and 50s, which is quite the change from the summer's temperatures. This weekend will be the perfect time to get up to the mountains because those colors are starting to change. Now, as you can see, now until early October is the best time to see those leaves change throughout the state and into mid-October you can also catch those on the outskirt of the state. Now let's take a look at your seven-day forecast. Tomorrow we'll see a high of 82 and a breeze from the southeast that will fade throughout the day. This weekend temperatures will become more mild and highs will be in the mid to upper 70s. Monday will be back in the low 80s and Tuesday we'll see a chance of thunderstorms in the afternoon with a high near 75. Now that's all I have for you this week. Back to the desk. Thanks, Car. It's nice to see the cooler weather coming in because this past summer brought Colorado one of its driest years yet, which did not help the fire issues throughout the state. However, the mountains were not the only part of the state that were dry. We stopped by a local crop to see how they were financially beating the heat this summer. Even if we went through a drought like we did this year, we have the water available to us to use. All we have to do is get the permission to use it. It's no secret Colorado is experiencing one of its driest years yet. And for farmers like Glenn Fritzler, alternative sources to water are a hot commodity. We were sitting on uh, four Lake McConaughey's of groundwater below us that virtually is going to waste. Fritzler is the owner of the Fritzler family farm in LaSalle, Colorado. He was born and raised on the farm, which has been family owned for more than 50 years. Alongside farming, Fritzler also runs a yearly corn maze and event center on his property. But with such dry climate, Fritzler's plan for a corn maze brought him one question. Now what are you going to do? Fritzler decided to take his passion to the sky and relate this dry season to one of the NFL's greatest players ever. The Fritzler family farm says, much like the year Peyton Manning had, they're facing adversity as well. So Glenn, so Glenn Fritzler dedicated this year's corn maze to a Broncos star. Peyton Manning missed all last year due to a neck injury, but he worked hard on the field, something Fritzler says inspired his crops. Really a good person. You know, besides being an incredible player like everybody knows, he's also a, it's just a huge, a huge awesome role model. Dedication to surviving tough times inspired Fritzler. Away from the giant corn maze and plenty of paintballing buses, Fritzler wants the community to take away one thing from his farm. You know, we, we just want to make memories, make good memories. It's just at the, the tail end of the year, and they, all, they only say uh, they remember you uh, however you were in your last game. Well, this is our last game, of this, so if we have a good game here, we're going to forget about the bad games that we had all summer long. Glenn Fritzler told us he was originally going to make his theme Tim Tebow. However, after the Broncos traded Tim, he only had one option, and that was Peyton Manning. And researchers at the University of Thailand recently discovered a parasitoid wasp and named it after, get this, pop star Lady Gaga. That's right, Allioids Gaga was discovered along a trail in the Chai San National Park in Thailand. The species was a part of the first turbo taxonomic study where the species are classified with great speed. You know, that's really interesting. I wonder why they would have named the bug after her. I know. I mean, maybe her eyes, maybe her makeup. I don't really know. Yeah, so uh, we were kind of thinking, <laughs> what would be some ideas to name future bugs? And I had one idea, maybe the Beebs. The Beebs. Huh? Do I don't know. That? The younger girls would go crazy over that. Yeah, definitely. They would love it. <laughs> A bug they wouldn't mind squashing for the <laughs> parents and them keeping around for once. All right, well, unfortunately, that's all the time we have for you tonight. All right, and to stay updated on the latest news, log on to our website at ctv11.com or follow us on Facebook and Twitter at ctv11. Thanks for staying with us tonight. Have a great night. If you're looking for a new pet, consider adopting from a shelter. Shelters are full of healthy and loving pets, eager to become a part of your family. To find out more, you can visit the shelterpetproject.org.